So let's talk about all things tech. I'm Emilio, I love the Mac, and I love Windows. And I love the fact that they work really, really well together. Now you may be thinking, no, they don't. They just do not work. They're not compatible. The files are different. The whole thing just doesn't work very, very well. Now let me tell you that they do function together. They do actually work quite well together. If you wanna record the screen on your Mac, maybe you're wanting to demo a software package, maybe you're wanting to play a game, you're wanting to go onto YouTube and wanna record something off there, you have to check out the Rec Expert software by a company called Ease Us. You can essentially record any audio as well, webcams, you know, if you've got a Zoom meeting, other cool things, you can make your own GIFs as well, really nice animated GIFs, and it's also a built-in media player. You can go and download it for free, but you can get a whole bunch of additional things, such as scheduling things, you can split recordings, and a whole bunch more. Link down below in the description, and thanks so much to Ease Us for sponsoring this part of the video. I've been using the Mac and Windows for a long time, in my personal life, right, and in my professional life. Now I work in tech and I've recommended both the Mac and Windows in a corporate environment depending on the use because there are benefits to both, there are negatives to both. And you may be thinking, ah, oh, I can't believe you just said that there are negatives to the Mac. I'm sorry for all you Mac fan boys and girls, unfortunately the Mac is not perfect and the same is also true of Windows. I think it's good that I respect both. You should also be respecting both. Don't be like a Mac hater here or somebody who's just so diehard Apple fanboy girl. If you're a Windows person, that's fine. You know, that's fine. But don't be a Apple hater. I don't understand why we've got so many Apple haters out in the world. And then, I mean, the other way is true as well. Like the Apple folks are like, like a bit cultish. You know, they're like this this weird cult. Not good either, cults are bad. This video, we're gonna be talking about integration. Uh, how do the things work together? How do you transfer stuff between the two? So there are a few things that we're gonna be talking about, but here is today's tech fail. Did you ever hear of Antenna Gate? This was a, a thing that happened in 2010. Apple had this little bug, this little weird thing that was going on with their iPhone. The iPhone 4 was released and then people started having issues with the iPhone's antenna. It was plagued by signal and reception issues if you held the phone in a certain way. And essentially this issue became known as Antenna Gate and it led to a significant public relations disaster for Apple. Of course they fixed it and the rest is history. Now we're gonna be covering seven ways that you can actually transfer files between the Mac and between Windows and vice versa. Now one of the easiest ways, and this is where number seven starts, is external USB hard drives. External USB thumb drives, you can just plug them into one, copy some files and plug them into the other. Talk a little bit about file systems. Essentially, Windows uses this file system called NTFS, the Mac doesn't play very well with NTFS. Essentially on the Mac, you can read the contents of it, but you can't actually write data to that NTFS drive. On the Mac, you've got APFS, which is Apple's file system. There's an, another one called Mac OS Extended. And both of those, if you format a USB drive on the Mac and you plug it into a Windows computer, Windows won't actually recognize it either and it won't actually work. So what do you do? Well, there are software packages that you can install on the Mac to actually be able to read and write properly NTFS. And you can install some software on Windows to be able to read and write the APFS and the Mac OS extended. What I recommend is format the drive in XFAT, EXFAT. And that format works quite well between the Mac and Windows. We've then got cloud storage. You've got Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. And these work across both platforms. So you could install one of these applications onto your computer, sync some files, and then install that same application on the other computer and sync some files back. So Mac and Windows both work with Google Drive, with Dropbox, all of these main cloud providers, and that's really an easy way to be able to transfer stuff between the two. The next one may seem simple, but a lot of people just forget about the good old fashioned email. Why did you just email the files? Hey, you've got Gmail. I mean, it's one of the biggest emails out there. If you're in a work environment, you've got something like maybe Outlook, well, hey, Outlook works on both Windows and on the Mac. Click on Compose, put in your email address, attach a file, send it off. You got it on the other side, great. The next one is some remote desktop management software. I installed some remote desktop software on my Mac to connect to my Windows computer. I want to share this folder on the Finder 
on my Windows computer. And I can actually put in the IP address or the host name of my Windows computer. And then when you log into Windows, there you have it inside the My Computer, inside Windows Explorer, you've actually got the folder of your Mac. So you can easily transfer files just by doing a simple copy and paste drag and drop between those two computers. You can also do something like TeamViewer. You can install TeamViewer on the two, allow you to actually transfer files as well. Another way you can do this is using FTP or SFTP. You essentially install some FTP software on the computers. Maybe FileZilla would be a good one. You then connect from one to another. One of the FTP software packages essentially becomes like an FTP server. And then you connect to the other computer using the IP address, the host name, and then you can easily upload and download and transfer files between one and the other. And number two is Bluetooth. Now it's very, very common nowadays for almost every computer to have Bluetooth. Bluetooth is one of those awesome technologies to actually connect your wireless keyboard and mouse you're using Bluetooth, great. On a Mac, all you gotta do is go into the system preferences area, into the Bluetooth space, making sure that it's turned on. And on Windows, you're gonna go into control panels, into the devices and printers, and making sure that Bluetooth is enabled. Then you just pair the two computers together, and then you transfer the files using like something like a sender file or a transfer of the file between both. So Bluetooth is brilliant. And here we go with number one. Now this is the way that I generally recommend you to be transferring files, especially if you're gonna be doing it regularly. Now there are some technologies that you can use. We'll leave this for another video, but you can also use things such as file servers, mapping your shares, using a NAS like a network attached storage. So that's the sort of stuff that you would generally find in a corporate world. And we can talk about that, a whole video just dedicated on that. But the way that I recommend it is to connect both devices on the network and you're transferring data across the network, a network file transfer over your Wi-Fi, if you've got wireless, maybe over some of those blue network cables. So we need to enable sharing on both of the computers. This is Windows and here we have our Mac and the Finder and all of that sort of stuff. On our Mac, we're gonna go into our system preferences area. We're then gonna go into the general area over here and we're gonna go to this area called sharing. Within sharing, you've got file sharing. You'll see that's currently turned off. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. We're gonna click on this little I over here and over here you're going to see straight away that we've got our Emilio Aguero folder. This is the full folder of our computer and here is who has access to it. At the moment it's Emilio Aguero, staff and everyone and here you want to go and create maybe a user that you want to have on the Windows side to be able to access to it. But if you just want to use the standard user on your Mac, which is in my case going to be Emilio Aguero, there it is right there and that has read write permissions to this particular folder right over here. If I wanna be very specific with other folders, I can click on the little plus and go and navigate to a folder. So I can select, I wanna also do music, select documents, and now I'm additionally sharing documents and music using these users that you see over here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and select Emilio Aguero. I'm gonna also select options right over here. You'll see that share files using SMB is turned on. I'm gonna turn that on. We're gonna throw in the password for this Emilio Aguero user. That has now been turned on. You'll also notice that to access this area, here is the IP address of 172.16.1.191. This is the IP address of this Mac computer on our Windows. We're gonna go into the start area. We're gonna select control panel. In here, we go into the network and sharing center. Advanced sharing settings. And you'll notice that there's home, work, public, and domain. If you're just at home and on work, I'm gonna go and turn network discovery on, and I'm gonna also turn on file and print sharing. If you're also in a domain setting, you can also turn them on in those environments. As long as they're turned on, we're gonna select save. We're gonna go into our start menu, and under the search, backslash, backslash, and then that IP address of 172.16.1.191. Now, may I ask you here for your username and password? This is where you're gonna put in the username of your Mac and the password of the user of that Mac and click on OK. And if everything has worked, you should be then presented with this Emilio Aguero public folder, which corresponds to this. And here we got documents and music. I can then simply navigate to a folder right over here, click on copy, 
and actually paste that file directly on my Windows computer. In the network area, your Mac may just show up right over here if it's been shared and discovered and a bit of time has passed. And then you could simply double click on it, throw in those Mac credentials yet again, and then you can connect right into there. But what about the other way around? Got my Finder again, after a bit of time, you may actually be able to select the network area in your Finder and your Windows computer should show up. But if it doesn't show up, you can also navigate to it manually by going into the Go area at the very top, selecting Go to Server right over here, and then throwing in the SMB colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of your Windows computer. If you wanna know what the IP address of your Windows computer is, you open that Windows computer up and we're gonna go into our start menu into command prompt, I'm gonna type in ipconfig, and there it is, 172.16.1.30. And as long as my sharing has been turned on, on my Mac side, good to go. SMB colon forward slash forward slash 172.16.1.30 being the IP address of my Windows. I can click on connect. Now going to ask me for the credentials, the username and password of my Windows computer. I'm gonna select users and it's now connected and I can actually go and navigate now. Here's my desktop, here's my documents and my downloads. I could go and copy FileZilla right over here and then I could just paste it right on my computer. Now one small little thing is if you're having trouble connecting because the username and password is not working, it could be that you're in a business and you've got something that's called a domain. You may need to pass your domain into there when you are trying to connect, something like a domain backslash and then your username and your password right over there. So now you need to go and try these yourself. Why don't you let us know which option you're gonna be going for? Hey, but don't go anywhere. We release videos every single week and actually there's one right here. So why don't you stay tuned? tuned as we continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you there.